Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky here from Blue Cat Studio. I'm one of the guests for the um, online paint night. And hello if you're tuning in directly from my page. This is day two of the ornament challenge and we're gonna paint a snowman or a Santa hat, sorry, not a snowman, a Santa hat on an ornament. So I've actually taped this down so it doesn't go anywhere and I've got it taped to a piece of paper because let me tell you, trying to manage a small ornament is a royal pain. So I've got white and a, um, sea breeze kind of teal color i'm just going to mix them together i'm trying to go for a very light teal so just kind of making a very pale mix i'm going to go ahead and just coat that ornament now if you're like hey why are you painting on music well in case i go over sometimes i get a little extra painting on, on my on my background stuff and honestly sometimes that looks really really cool if you're using it for a journal or even in a um what do you call it a uh like a collage piece or multi a mixed media piece gosh i haven't messed up and said multimedia in a long time mixed media <laughs> anyways if you're there say hi let me know let me know where you're where you're watching from and here we go all right so we have a good base teal it's very, very pale. It's almost kind of like a, a minty color. I really like that. Whoops, a little extra white in there. And I have, let's see, where's my journal page? I'm just gonna offload my extra paint kind of in my funky journal before I rinse it. Now, if you don't have ornaments, you know what you can do? You can always take a jar lid and literally just trace it like so. Bloops complete the sound effects too. And you've basically got a nice little circle. Then you can draw a square and a loop. So I don't know if you can actually see what I did there. Oh, I'll go over it in pen just so that you're kind of like, oh yeah, I can participate even if I don't have wooden ornament cutouts. There you go. See, now you can just paint right inside there, cut them out later um, or get really creative and crafty. Again, this is not a project that's meant to break the bank. It's a project that we're trying to trying to do for you to have fun. I got Holly joining me live. Hey there, Holly, how you doing? It's good to see you, my dear. So I'm gonna be doing a quick dry on this just because I need to be able to see it. So next up, we're gonna grab our red and I'm using the Anita's Tomato Red. You could also do the, um, hey Marta. You could also do the um, the Tomato Red from DecoArt. Doesn't really matter, but think of it as like a warm red, right? It's not like the Tuscan red from Deco Art, which tends to be kind of a, um, a cool red. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of white over here and mix some red in, and I'm gonna create a pinkish color. And the reason I'm doing the pinkish color is because we've got this, this teal and we got undertones. So I would say about a third of the way from the bottom, maybe right around here, I'm gonna kind of create a lumpy gumdrop shape or you know rounded top triangle so go ahead and just get that little triangle in oh you love the happy colors i'm so glad thank you marta so marta says i love the happy colors you use thank you i do too and in fact i'm going for this whole like christmas like aesthetic theme this uh this year i mean i've always kind of either done like red and white or or teal and pink and this year, I'm like, let's see what happens if we smush them all together. Okay, so we've kind of got this going here like so. I'm just kind of expanding it out. I'm going to give it a little tail and almost like, oops, I need to mix a little bit more. And, you know, this color doesn't really matter. Don't overthink it. It's just creating a good solid base that kind of blocks out that, that teal background, right? Because, you know, it's really hard to get a bright, bright red on top of that teal when you're going over it, but trying to paint around the hat would drive you even crazier. So keeping it very, very simple, right? And you can get as stylistic as you want, I'm just trying to show you the basics. So it's almost like just a line, like a little skinny triangle coming right off the edge of that. Now, here's where it's gonna get a little weird. You're gonna take that same pink and you're just gonna kind of dab around like so where the rough would be. If you're like, what? Why am I using pink to make that? trust the process my friends it's kind of an underlayment or a base coat and we'll be doing more on top of that afterwards okay so now we've got and you know you can even dab a little bit inside just just for giggles right i'm gonna blow my dryer on this again just so i can do a second coat and we're gonna come over this with the brighter red but we wanted to get our basic 
our basic red going. So the heat gun I am using here is a Ranger Heat It craft tool. It looks like a hair dryer. However, look how quiet it is. It's like you can barely hear it, which I love because it means I can blow dry stuff while going live without like blasting your eardrums. So now I'm grabbing straight red right off my palette. I'm just going to kind of come right over this to, to pop that red. Whoops, it didn't dry completely, but that's okay. Oh, don't you dare. So uh, I'm Blue Cat Studio, and I have cats, and one of them is on the counter right now yelling at me. That's lovely. Any other crazy cat ladies out there? It's cool. I love you if you're a dog person, too. All right, so we're just getting that basic red coating. And see how that really pops now? But the pink, the pink helps inordinately. It just kind of brings it, brings it to the surface. It's not the pink, it's the mixed red. So I often use white. Um, it's almost like a little cheat as a way to, um, what am I trying to say? To, to create, um, to block out the under, under color. So I'm gonna offload my paint a little bit just so that I have less paint on my brush. And now I'm gonna grab the Mermaid Tail Teal. That is a deep teal. And so if, you know, if you don't have this one, like a peacock teal would be fine from Deco Art Americana. The folk art straight up just teal is good, but I really love the darkness of it. Now you notice I have not set the dryer on this thing and I'm gonna allow some on, well, canvas for lack of a better term, mixing to occur. So I'm gonna just kind of get over here on the left side of the Santa hat. We'll rotate that for a second so everybody on the an online paint night can see it. I'm going to kind of come underneath as well, just creating a little bit of shading. And again, I always say trust the process. Oh no, did my thing didn't work? Oh, okay. So here I was like trying to like catch a time lapse. I was all excited. I think I forgot to hit the start button because sometimes these look so cool when you watch them later, like in full speed. Okay, and then I'm gonna, oh my gosh, take that same teal. Oh, hey, Marta. Okay, so she says she's gotta go. Um, oh, thank you. You create wonderful art. Thank you. Well, when you do this, Marta, please, 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 please post pictures of your stuff. I absolutely love to see it. All right, and we are getting just some of that teal in the under portions of the hat. And again, I realize that seems sort of strange, but again, I like to say trust the process. So I'm going to add a little second layer here because we got a lot of dark mixing, but I want some of that, that deep teal mermaid tail, my favorite, to pop a little. And so some of the ways to keep a white from being just a boring white is to have under layers. And that's what we're doing right now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and offload. Again, if you didn't catch that earlier, I have like this big old junk journal here and I literally just offload my brush. It keeps my, it keeps my paint water a little cleaner, a little longer. It's less pigment going down the drain. If you are making art all the time, kind of the way I am, sometimes having all that paint water um, and stuff going down your drain might start to add up and you might increase your plumber's bills. Okay, let's give this guy a quick blast. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. Yeah, actually I'm just gonna give it a minute to, to do its thing. All right, the red is almost dry. I'm gonna call that good. I'm grabbing the white and I'm gonna mix it in here to that little bit of pink that I already did. Just pull it out and make a lighter pink. There we go. See how we've got a very light pink? So there's the red, the red and white, and then it's mostly white with a little red. I come through and kind of add a little highlight along the top, a little bit here, maybe a little in the corner. And I'm gonna take that same pink and start to layer little bit and I'm just dab dab dabbing all along here the fluffy part of the hat again trust the process we're doing this in layers so we're building up the color and this is how it kind of and starts to feel like it's got all that that nuance and interest and uh I don't know if you saw but we do have fluorescent red very excited about this it's one of my absolute favorite colors because you know there's no such thing as too bright Again, you're just dabbing, kind of making that ball with a little bits of the teal popping through, little tiny bits of overlapping in that teal, the dark teal that is. All right, so we got that nice base layer and maybe we'll bring a little bit of the light kind of 
along the edge of that hat and I'm just kind of almost not quite dry brushing it. I've got a small wet zone here, so it's blending nicely. Okay. So again, those of you on the craft, the, the online paint party or online paint night group, just showing you this. And again, as a reminder, if you, um, if you don't have wood ornaments, I got mine like a 50 pack for 10 bucks at Michael's, or you can get similar from Amazon. These are the three inch ones. You can always literally trace a jar lid and do it and then do it later. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and offload my brush a bit. I don't need to rinse it because I'm going to be using similar color tones. I'm going to go into the straight white, grab more. Yeah. I'm going to, I still want to touch a pink, but we're really trying to, there we go. So it's almost exactly white, but not quite. I'm going to dab some in here. Dab, 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 dab. And again, we'll do the dabbing of the pink or the white on this one, mostly on the top of the ball so that the lower portion of that poof is still has that pink. Whoa, I picked up some of the turquoise. So if you get pick up turquoise or other color on your brush, just kind of offload it and then come back into your paint. And so we're going to keep that lighter portion kind of on the top. And the, the source of the light for this particular design is kind of coming from the right. And the shadow is kind of on the left and underneath. So we're going to allow a little bit of that lighter color to kind of creep down the edges along here. Hopefully this makes sense, you guys. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Pop your comments in there. I absolutely love it when people chat with me while I'm doing my live paintings. It's super fun. And sometimes it, it you know, keeps me from just monologuing. So I love talking to you. All right. But if, hey, if you're too busy painting, that is awesome too. So you notice we've just kind of dab, dab, dabbed the whole way. And we've allowed some of that pink to stay underneath. Your brain still sees it as white, which is cool, until you sort of take that painter's analysis with a painterly eye and break it down, which is something cool. All right, let's 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 break in some of the fluorescent red. I mean, I could leave it like this, but I want this guy to like really pop. Sometimes I feel like I'm cheating when I use my fluorescent orange, but... I don't really care. I love me some fluorescent orange. So again, offloading my brush. I'm not going to rinse it. I can just keep going. So just grabbing some of that fluorescent orange and we'll bring it in right in here, kind of in the highlight zone, right below that white and even overlapping a smidge, like right in the hat. Like, okay, I'm going to just dab it with my finger. And because it is a fluorescent red, it's just going to kind of pop a little extra vibrancy into your Santa hat. And if you're like, whew, girl, that is too much, we can tone it down. In fact, I've got, I, I would like to tone it down a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of that um, fluorescent red and a kiss of the Anita's tomato red. I'm going to mix it together to create kind of a hybrid red that still is very, very warm. It's going to pop, but will help kind of blend these two together. And then I can just come back in and grab some of the pure red, the tomato red, and again, just kind of blend. And that's going to help me create like a better transition between the, <coughs> excuse me, the highlights and the lowlights. Okay, now I'm looking at this and feeling like the um, shadow here is maybe a little bit too harsh. So actually, we'll grab a touch of that sort of pinky. The one with a little bit of white and add a little bit more red to it. Why do I do that? Because it's thicker coverage. And we'll kind of, just kind of brushing little bits on. There we go. And you can just kind of almost dab dot, 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 dot a little bit in there. And that just kind of softens it a little, makes it kind of pop. Okay. Offloading again. Uh, don't need to rinse. Now I'm going to take some white over here. Bloop. And it a little touch of the fluorescent red. Okay, a little bit more of a touch. I'm going to create kind of a peachy, peachy color. All right. Then I'm going to, then you're going to offload a lot of that. So you just have a, a sort of a little bit of it. And then we're going to add little touches, little dab dabs in here and there, kind of along the, the top of the rim of that. Maybe kind of in the mid zone here. A little bit on the underside. Again, very, very light dots. For those of you on the online paint night. Oh, hey, Suze, how you doing? She says, that looks awesome. Thank you. Okay. 
So I am streaming in a whole bunch of different places. So if you're like, hey, I don't I don't see half the people you're talking to or I don't know what you're talking about there, Wendy. I don't see those people. It's because I am in, live in a couple of spots. Um, so if you're interested in doing this with me every single day and I'm talking like, you know, 25 days because this is our Advent calendar Christmas, um, you can always find me basically at Blue Cat Studio Art on Facebook. And I'm going to kind of pop around into various groups to also include you, make sure that you're kind of getting, getting the love. So hopefully you can kind of see what happened. I took a little bit more of that um, fluorescent red, white, peachy mix and added a little highlight kind of along the edge, the edge there. So I'm feeling like we're, we're kind of where we need to be. And you see how we have the darker teal in the background and all it does is it just pops the entire design forward. Oh, Sue said, Sue, I need to drink some water. My tongue is all twisted. Sue says, I love the hat so much. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to offload my brush again, because we love to do this. Rinse it. And I think it's time to add some glitter. So we'll give it a quick dry. Again, that's just because I don't want my glitter picking up extra. So now the question is, if we're going to add glitter, it's always glitter paint, paint. Don't you worry. It's not like the kind of thing that's going to leave, you know, glitter herpes all over the house and in the cracks of your hardwood floor and all that stuff. This is nicely contained in a goo. So I have a couple of options. I have the shimmery, shimmery silver, which I kind of love, but it does add a level of darkness if it's at the wrong angle. And then I've got the Craft Smart uh, Crystal, which is really awesome. Or let me see if I have the other one. Do I have the other one? No, I don't. Huh. Or I misplaced it. Okay. I had some other really cool crystal ones, but I don't know where I put them. So I would love to know from you guys which ones you think I should use. So we've got the clear one. Let me show you what that looks like. Uh-oh. Stop. Okay. So we've got the clear one, which basically goes on clear and you can't really see it here, but let me see if we can get some shimmer in there, but it's got the iridescent shimmer. So it's very, very subtle. Or we've got, this one is the Ceram Coat by Delta. It does not have a squeeze top. You have to, and then it just goes on like iridescent, but with a, with a silver undertone. So you can see that one much better on camera. This one is a little subtler. I would love to know which ones you think we should do. Bum, 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 bum. Can we tell? Can we tell? I don't know. I feel like the only one you can see on camera is that one. So maybe we'll just use that one so you can actually see and be part of this. And Holly says, I love this. It's simple, but not too much since it has the shadows, lightning, lighting, light, blah, and stuff. Exactly. So I'm just going to stick my brush right in here in the silver. And I could, ooh, you know what we could do? You know what we could do? All right, I'm getting like totally like ADHD here. I'm going to take the crystal stuff and I'm going to do the crystal glitter on the hat so that it doesn't take away at all from the design. Okay, so we're going to do the hat in crystal and then I'm going to do the blue part with the silver. So I'm just using my finger because I already put the other stuff on my brush. Okay. So that will, once it dries, will make a lot more sense. It's, it, it goes on kind of white. If you're using a deco art Americana brand, it will go on clear and it's actually awesome, but I don't know where I put mine. So here, we'll give it a little blast. Blasty blast. Let me give it a break here. Now, so one of the goals, if I haven't mentioned it before, I'm going to mention it again uh, for this um, orna Advent Ornament Challenge is to try to keep it at about 20 minutes. And you can tell we we kind of nailed it today. Um, you know, I've paused with a little chit chat and messing with the glitter, but I feel like we've done like we've done the work and now we're just playing and messing around and putting glitter everywhere. So I'm focusing the glitter kind of along the rim and the outside of this thing. Now this one is interesting, the ceram coat stuff, because it's it's got like all kinds of different sizes. So I have these like big chunky bits, and then I've got like the little bits, and you know, I'm trying to get it even is a little bit of a challenge. I tried to put this on my my nails one time, like I did my nail polish and then did this, did a top coat. It was very weird. It didn't work, but 
I do love me some glitter. What do you guys think about glitter? Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. So I could do way more, but again, the closer I get in with a glitter, it's going to kind of detract, at least in my opinion, from the hat itself. And so right now the hat is a little washed out because the, the base glitter I put on it is, um, what am I trying to say? It, it goes on, it goes on white, but it does dry clear. So we'll offload this glitter. Oh my gosh, this musical paper now looks really cool. And I'm going to rinse my brush ASAP. So now you can kind of see the hat is starting to dry. There's a big chunk of glitter right there. That, there we go. Oh, Holly says, I've had fun with the glitter nails too. And she likes the second one, which was the silver one. So I guess Holly made the decision for you guys. We're going to do that. All right. So there, that's pretty close to dry. I'm not sure I'd handle it. And now I can kind of untape it. Pull it off. And the other reason I, I tape it down, so I just used a loop of like painter's tape to kind of attach it because it meant I could move things around because when you're trying to like hold this thing down and paint, it's really pain in the, you know what. And so for the back part, I mod podged, uh, what's it called? Wrapping paper to the back um, and then did a coat. That way the, the tape's not going to peel it off or anything. But there you have it. Look at, oh my gosh, it shimmers, it shimmers. So that is day two. Let's see, where'd I put day one? Oh, my poor, let's say my, my poor desk is, is such a disaster zone right now. I've always got something. Oh, here it is. Okay. So here was day one. This one needs glitter, doesn't it? We definitely need glitter. And here's day two. Now, again, you can put these on your advent calendar in any order. Oh, you know what we're missing? We need some gold. I forgot to put that in the supply list. I apologize, but we're going to take some of this uh, 24 karat extreme sheen. Oh, I'm almost out. So remember, whenever you paint and you've rinsed your water or rinsed your, your brush, dry it off, really. Just squeeze that water out of there because you do not want, um, you don't want um, any water in there. So I'm going to grab some of that gold and just kind of dab it on. All pretty. And we'll let that one dry naturally. So I really, really love, again, I don't get paid to endorse this stuff, but I absolutely love the DecoArt Extreme Sheen 24 karat gold. Um, they also have this tub of stuff. It's like the decor matte finish gold, which is amazing, but it's not always easy to find. So there we have that finishing touch. I don't have a good silver or rather nobody I've found really makes a good silver. So we're just going with gold. I think I painted the back already. So Holly asked, is it better to do the back part first? And I'm going to say actually no. If you're a sloppy painter like me, you may in fact do better off not mod podging the, the backs of all of these with the wrapping paper first. But I got on a roll the other night and I got so excited and I decided to prep them up and, you know, honestly, arranging them and rearranging them also kind of made cool videos. And I just love the colors. So if you're wondering about the whole back thing, you can literally like just rummage through your wrapping paper supply. My thoughts are, if you bought the wrapping paper, you probably like it and it probably kind of fits some of your aesthetic and your color scheme. Turns out I have like a 10 year history of buying pinks and turquoises and teals and reds and whites and patterns. I mean, I didn't, I haven't spent a dime on this yet. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys had fun. I'm going to be doing this every single day through Christmas. Sometimes I'll be live at normal hours. Sometimes I'm just going to squeeze it in where I can, but I'm going to find a way to get the videos up in various different places. So I hope you had fun. And again, you can uh, do this again with me next tomorrow, tomorrow, next time. I don't know what time though, um, but we will, we'll figure this out. Love you guys. Hugs and kisses. Bye. Here we go. I had to figure out how to finish all these things, huh? There we go. Bye guys.